it will not be a Jewish state anymore. We have to be able to create a reality based on the needs. In Islam, they see Judaism as a form of Islam. Don't hate the player, hate the game. All the politicians are corrupt because the system in itself is corrupt. We just bumped into this group of young students that are mixed of international students, but also 20% Israelis, 20% Palestinians, um, that try to create programs for them to interact with one another, learn together, understand the complexities of this land, and hopefully, B'zat Hashem, be able to raise a younger generation that sees things past our differences and can envision a collective reality that actually fulfills the aspirations of both peoples. These are some of the conversations that we had together. I have a question. Um, so I like I enjoy your videos, right? Because you go to these liberal colleges and whatnot, and um, they're really they don't know as much as you do. Uh, but I, you, you talk about peace, right? And but under the sovereignty of Israel. And just my question is, right? How it will not be a Jewish state anymore. Are you okay with that? It will not be a Jewish democracy. Why would it not be a Jewish democracy? Because the population you have would offset. An Arab exactly. I think what we have right now is not a Jewish state. It's a Western state with Jewish decorations. So we have Hebrew, we have a menorah, we have different things that make us feel like it's Jewish on the surface level, but it's not deeply Jewish. So you have the religious people that feel this isn't Jewish enough, you have the secular people who feel this is too Jewish, you have the right that feels this is too much to the left, you have the left that feels too much to the right. So clearly the structure that we built here does not work not only for Palestinians but for Israelis either. Right? We're on our fourth election and nothing has been built here that actually works for the people. So I think that we need to create something that focuses on solving the aspirations of both populations and being able to solve the injustices that both experience. There are many ideas of what that could be. For example, a federation plan, where the way Middle Easterners and Jews have always governed themselves is regionally, so local power. So how would you define a Jewish state? Like a state that has the values that is in tune with my culture and my identity and it doesn't contradict the values and cultures of the Druzim, the Armenians, the Palestinians and the other people here. It has to be deeply Jewish and I don't think Palestinians have any problem with something valuing our culture, especially when the cultures are so similar. So Harabait, the temple, is supposed to be a temple for all people, not just for one. And so why don't we create a reality where we could all access this place without any limitations. You guys were able to go up. I, because I had a kippah, was not able to go. I was only able to go all around with 10 police officers around me because I'm Jewish. Uh, religiously speaking, you, you have different cultures. Like, we have very similar cultures. In fact, Islam is, is, in Islam, they see Judaism as a form of Islam because okay. we also submit to Allah. And we have the Prophet Musa, which is our Prophet, and they have Prophet Muhammad. You want Muslims together. to live here the same as Jews. What's so the problem? Why would the state be Jewish and not Muslim? Jewish is a people, Muslim is a religion. So ideally, um, the Jewish could pray possibly go... In the Torah, this is supposed to be a, a, a holy place for all nations. So this is supposed to be a house of, of God, of Hashem, for all peoples, not just for Jews. It is our temple, it's our most holiest place. And we're not going to pretend that it's not, but it's supposed to be open for all. So you won't hear from anybody, at least that I've heard, of someone saying that Jews should be able to pray there that are saying Muslims can't pray there at all. In fact, as a Jew, I can pray in a mosque. I can't pray in a temple, a uh, Buddhist temple or in a church. But mosque is kosher because we both believe in, in oneness, in Allah, which is panentheism, not monotheism. Our needs actually don't contradict one another. Manisha. <laughs> Last time I saw these guys was in New York. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you would think of a federation? Yeah, a federation like is, is, a, one state is an example, right? There are many different formats that we can create or we can come up with. We have to realize that a two-state solution will never happen, yeah. right? Neither Israelis nor Palestinians want that. It doesn't fulfill our aspirations and it does not end the injustices. And a one state in creating what we currently have and just extending it won't work either. So we have to think of something else that kind of combines the needs of both peoples that we can create. And there are many theories out there that are valid but no one is thinking that way. We're still thinking black and white. The Knesset is built for division. It's a British parliamentary system that is built to create small little parties for small little ideas and to fight between each other in order to, in order to maintain power. And in the maximum four years that a politician has to be prime minister, probably a lot less than that. I mean, we're going on foreign elections within you know, a year to two years. So what the politician can do in that time is do small little policies in order to get the return, in order to get reelected, rather than focus on long-term things in order to actually change a society and unite a society. So I say often, don't hate the player, hate the game. All the politicians are corrupt because the system in itself is corrupt. I just have a question about, uh, the same I time totally feel you on like the grassroots field, movement and yeah. the people to people. I missed what you said, I apologize, I missed the beginning. Okay. Do you support an independent Palestine? No, I support one civilization from the river of the sea, equal and, and free for all. I think that we need to have regional control. That's what we need to focus on. I'm going back into the way that we've always governed ourselves in the Middle East, by the regions. Is it solution? Yeah. 
Like no, it's think of something like uh, the Canton system in Switzerland and the UAE system. What, what do we do about the fact that there are millions of Israelis who want an independent Israel and there are millions of Palestinians who want an independent Palestine? What do we do about that reality? So we have to understand what do people actually mean when they say we want this? Because the aspirations of Israelis and Palestinians are not the same. We have different histories, we have different ties, we have different connections. For example, for Palestinians, local control is way more important for Israelis. Most Israelis do not know who the mayor of Tel Aviv or Haifa or Bersheba is. And if they know what the name is because they heard it once, they don't know what they do. You go to Hebron or to Ramallah or to uh, Nablus, you know who the families are that are running that city. Everyone knows. So the, the, the needs of different peoples are different. And so when you actually write a list of what are the top 10 things that are needs for Palestinians, what are the top 10 things that are needs for Israelis, and if you bring them together, none of them contradict. So we have to be able to create a reality based on the needs and not just based on like our superimposed ideas of what the other one needs and what we need because they're totally different and in my opinion they don't contradict. I don't disagree with any of that, but do you disagree with the premise of my question that there are millions of people on both sides who want their own country? Yes, because we think that we can't have something together because that's what we've been taught. And that very idea is what allows us to be in war. It's not going to be separate and it's not going to be one or the other. It's going to be both and it's going to be together. So I actually had a three-on-three -three conversation between Israelis and Palestinians, and two of the Palestinians say we would support the two-state solution. And we asked them why. He's like, because at least we get this now, and then later we can go on there. So he's like, you don't agree with the two-state solution. You agree with having this right now. So fundamentally, they don't agree with the two-state solution on either side. So we have to stop thinking of the short term of what they need in order to feel happy now, but something that we both need to actually fix the problems on the long term. So I think what you're saying is that the people who say that and express that desire, that they don't actually want that. They, they mean something very different and that what we actually when mean on both sides. When you say you mean more fundamental things. Yeah. Like you want freedom of movement, you want freedom of choice, yeah. you want security, you want uh, freedom to express your culture. And th those things will not necessarily happen. Yeah. And the U.S. says the only way you solution. get that is by two-state yeah. solution. Look, so. Even if that's 100% true, which for argument's sake, let's say it's 100% true, 100% true, that's a very difficult process to get millions of people who say they want a one-state or two-state solution to then go to a deeper level and try to understand their internal desires of the real things they need and want. But Would you agree that that's somewhat... The process anyhow is difficult, right? Yeah, but that's a really it's deep... Exciting. It's that's exciting a deep... because we get to live in the history that in the future they'll learn that our generation was able to yeah. come together. So I take it as like, I'm okay. excited to be able to play a role in this chapter of history. Yeah. I mean, that's a deep existential change you're making yeah. for millions of people. Like we've done many times in history in many different places. If you like our work and would like to support our team in generating content that educates, inspires, and empowers the youth in standing up for Israel and Jewish rights, please click on the link below.